Okay, guys, let's go over this. So let's take a look at what we got. Gerald, go to crude oil. All right, these are my supply and demand lines. Yesterday we had some real big moves. Today we just had a trade that fired off. Let's go over today's trade, then I'll go over yesterday's trade. Uh, trades, we had three opportunities, almost uh, 600 ticks on three trades, zone to zone. Let's go. Uh, let's go to today's action. So what happens before? Uh, right now, I'm developing an indicator that I'm going to get out to all my members. You can put it on all your charts right across the board. It doesn't matter what time frame. Um, it is. Uh, it will automatically plot these lines for you. Uh, all members will be getting uh, this with no extra additional charge. It's just something we're adding to our package. Um, they are very, very important. What I found is uh, is that there's been a lot of accumulation distribution areas uh, in the market, and these lines provide us great break retest trades. And we saw yesterday in the room when we were live in the room, I pointed out three spots to watch out for, and it nailed all three spots and you know the exact high actually in the market yesterday and I projected it 24 hours earlier so these lines are very very important they were great on the S&P great on um, great on crude oil NASDAQ futures uh, it doesn't matter what it is Dow minis it works on all markets so what we want to do is we I went over this yesterday for about an hour and a half in the room um, and what we want to do is we want to look at these levels as major accumulation distribution levels because that's what they are. Uh, this is where um, there was a major distribution in the market yesterday or major accumulation. In fact, I go two days back on it. So you may see some of my lines draw two, sometimes three days back because that's an area of importance in the market. Remember, these are electronically traded markets, so what they do is all these high-frequency uh, traders, algorithms, mainly they're just algorithms, uh, whether it be Goldman Sachs with their Delta programs or whoever it is, banks, they leave their accumulation distribution levels for us to see where we can draw these lines, and that's how these lines are generated. These, generated are, these lines are not generated just from the highs and lows in the market. It doesn't work that way. You got to have accumulation distribution areas that create natural support and resistance. So knowing that, we can play off of them. The easiest way to trade these levels in the room are this. So I put these levels up right now until I get the uh, indicator um, uh, program, which will be not very in the very short term here. I'm going to get out to all you guys. But since I'm just putting the levels in the room, like yesterday, I had those levels in the room uh, 24 hours ahead of time, and we had three big trades, almost 200 ticks each. Uh, with a risk of a hundred and eleven dollar stop uh, on the three sim and a hundred and fifty dollar stop on the on the five sim maximum, so we had a good twenty one to reward to risk three of them in a row. This one this morning we broke out. Um, here's the easiest way to trade the system. I put all the lines on the nine sim Renko. This is my larger time frame. Um, the reason being um, it's easy for me to see, but you can actually put these levels on your uh, five and three sim when you get the indicator. So the level was at this morning was right there at 16.07, uh, and that was yesterday's level or, or two days ago. So two days ago, I projected this level as being a major inflection point. Actually caught the high in the market this morning, early this morning, and it caught the high in the market yesterday. Uh, when we were at $12 a barrel, I projected 16.07. Sure enough, caught the exact high yesterday, and it tanked for 200 ticks. So these levels are very, very important, and they're big inflection points. So how do we trade them then? What we want to do is we want to simply look for a breakout of the trade. Now, what I want to see, uh, this is my 9 sim rate on my trend chart. A couple of vital things that are important on my trend chart, and this is all markets. Moving averages are worthless. Uh, they don't work. I mean, they just, they just do not work for support and resistance. I don't care if it's a 200, 13, 20, EMA, simple, exponential, Fibonacci moving average. They just don't work. They're lagging. What they are great for, they're great for trend direction. So... I have two moving averages. They're very easy to see. One is a white, one is a magenta. If we're angled up, then we need to be buying break retest on these institutional levels. If we're angled down, we need to be buying break down retest off these institutional levels. So a very simple pattern, and I've done this ever since I opened the room. Now I just make it easy for traders, is I want to break through. I want to break through because I'm in an uptrend. I started the uptrend here. So there's three 
there's three things I look for is I look for this uh, by trading these uh, supply and demand levels. One, I need to know the trend. The market can only do two things. It can trend or chop. Let's make things easy. You got to find the trend. Trend are the moving averages. Like I said, moving averages, terrible by themselves. For support and resistance, great for trend direction. That's the only reason I use them, to find my bias on the side of the break. So the trend's the first thing. If I'm angled up, then I need to be a buyer. If I'm angled down, I need to be a seller. So if I'm angled up, like yesterday, we were angled up. It was simple. Buy the breakout, retest. It nailed every single one of them. It was beautiful. It's three for three. So the trend, the trend's up. So the trend's up this morning. So what I want to do is I want to cut right through that supply line. I want to cut right through it. Why? Because the trend's up. I, I, I want to cut right through it. So if I cut right through it, what I want to do is I want to look for a retest then. So I want to look for a retest. So you see green, 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 red, red, red. Now the second thing I look for is if I look for the trend, I need to look for the level. The level are the supply demand lines. The levels are easy. The indicator will automatically plot it for you, but you can see it right now while I'm putting them in the room. I update them at night around 9 or 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and you'll see them on the chart all day. They're, they stay static. I do, do not move these lines for the entire trading day. These will be on here all day today. So all these levels that I'll show you in a second will be here all day. So the second thing is the level. The level are the supply demand lines. That's the second thing you want to look at. So we got the trend. We got the supply level. Yeah, I'll show it, Leo, in a second. All right, th there's a trend and there, th there's a level. Yeah, they're different than market profile lines, but they're when you get confluence, you've got a major trade. But you really don't even need the market profile lines to line up, Terrence, because these are major accumulation distribution levels. I can trade off of a blank chart just with my supply demand lines all by themselves. But now since we got all the other ingredients, it gives us just that more of a powerful trading system. So then you want the level. The level are the supply line. So I got the trend. If I log in as a trader, the trend's up, right? I see the trend's up. Trend's up. Then I want the level. The levels are these levels, these red lines. Those are the levels I want to trade off of, okay? I'll go over yesterday's trades. They were beautiful, just absolutely gorgeous trading yesterday. But those are our levels, okay? You see my level this morning. Caught the exact high again this morning here at 1.30 this morning. So those are our levels, trend and then the level. That's the second thing you look for, is a level. The third thing you look for, and this is very important because of, the, of these trend boxes, is speed. The, what separates this system with a lot of systems is I know when there's a high probability that they're going to move this market. They're going to move it. And they're moving the S&P right off my institutional line hard right now at that W bottom. Look at that. I'll show you that in a second. But you want speed in the market. So what I want to see on this large time frame is I want to see speed. And how do I categorize speed? The cool thing about me developing trend box is one of my favorite, if not my best indicator I've ever created, because it works just great with these levels too, is I want to see, okay, let me see when this market's going to take off. And I'll show you yesterday how it worked three for three. I want to see when this market's going to take off. I, my opinion doesn't count. Your opinion doesn't count. These are electronically traded markets. I want to see when there's an, an imbalance of orders. I want more buyers than sellers if I'm trying to buy trend. So the best way to do it is here. Best way to look at that market takeoff. It's just beautiful. Beautiful. All right, so here we go. Right here is the speed bars. What's a speed bar categorized as? A speed bar is categorized as one candle or two candle close inside of a closed trend box. One candle, the body of the candle, or two candle close inside the trend box. That is categorized as their speed coming in the market. So as you can tell right here, we had speed coming in the market. I had a one candle close inside the trend box. Now, this is a straddle over top of the line. I don't, I don't count that. So I got one candle and a one candle close. So that's the best case scenario you're going to get. If I see a one candle close on a speed bar getting through an institutional line, a supply demand, a supply demand, I'm ready to go. I am ready to go for the fourth thing. The fourth thing is my retracement. Now I'm ready for my retracement. And this process works on all markets. 
Make sure you scale on the S&P, guys. Coming really hard off my uh, supply line. I mean, demand line, sorry. I want to look for the full retracement. So I got the trend, the trend's up. I got my level, my supply and level levels. We know that 24 hours ahead of time. This is a leading indicator. I got my speed in the market telling me I've got more buyers than sellers. I got my full retracement coming up. Now, this is a nine Simrico. We don't want large stops. We had three trades yesterday that were almost 600 ticks within three trades. Three of them. It went from zone to zone to zone. So how do we get in with a small stop? What we do, this is my trend chart, right? So what we do, here, here's my trend chart. That's my trend chart. So as we are breaking through that level, I check down to my other two charts over here. I'm breaking through this level. Here's the trend. Trend is up. There's my level, this red level. My speed bar is coming through. There's my speed bar, my one candle close. And now let's get a full retracement. On a full retracement, we want to check down to over here. Check down to our other time frame, our five Simrico. Our five Simrico, as we're busting through, let's go back to that level again and see what level that was. That level was 1607. So you can put this on your chart on the five Simrico or three right next to it. And this pattern looks just like this. Put in 1607, there it is. Make sure I put it red for you so you can see it. This is how we got the 600, 600 tick potential yesterday. Same exact trade. All right, so same thing. It came up to it, it tried to go through it, hit its head, but then it busted through. It busted through. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a break retest on this time frame also. I want to break, I want to retest and go. So it had a W bottom, it had two shots at it. It landed right on top of it, exactly on top of it, and got a red bar reversal. We had divergence actually down here. You don't need it. Higher, higher uh, low in uh, oscillator, lower low in price. And then it got the low here. But you can see both levels were buy signals with a small stop. The maximum stop you want to do on these trades on a 5 sim is 15 ticks. And then you put your stop after you get in, you put your stop two ticks below this swing low. You never risk more than two ticks below the swing low. So there's your full retracement buy on the setup right there. Okay? So that's how you enter. Now, you probably ask, well, what do you have a 3 sim then for? What do you have a 3 sim if you got a 5 sim for entries? Well, let me go to 16. Let, let me show you over here at uh, on the 3 sim right next to it, the smaller time frame. I'll show you why. So let me put 16.07. So 16.07. Get the exact level for you. So 16.07, we broke through. What do we have right here? What do we have right here? Speed bar. I like to see speed on my smaller time frames busting through one of these levels. So you see how the speed bar busted through? Big speed bar. So what I like to do is you don't have to trade off the three sims since you're such a smaller time frame. You can confirm that the speed bars are actually going through the level at the time of the speed. So not only did you have a speed bar here, but you had a speed bar on the smaller time frame. So I'm busting through this level with speed. The main setup is a nine sim institutional level with a five sim pull in because it's a larger time frame and you're getting a bigger push. So that is your levels. Trend, level, speed, full retracement. Entry will be off the five. You do get a second shot out of it at the three if you want, if you miss it. And then you can use the symmetry dots to scale or your automated trail on your system. That is your approach. Now, let's take a look at how we trade level to level. So it's very simple. So 
Let's say this market starts coming back down. Can I trade off this level again? What we like to do is we like to do what? Yeah, I'm, I'll skinny him down there for you, Murph. It came off of one really hard just a second ago. There's your S&P level. It's coming up to S&P coming up to my major level right now. If we break through, guys and gals, uh, 2005, we got some upside. 2025, got a 10-point upside on the S&P coming up. Make sure you scale. Beautiful trade. I'll go over that in a second. Let me finish this with crude. And my levels just nailed it, the low. All right, so we got the trend. We got the level. We got the speed through it, speed bar, the full retracement. Got to spell retracement, right? And then we got the entry. And then you can use your automated uh, ATM to scale. All right, so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get through with speed. We're trying to get through with speed, then the retracement, and then the move. Okay? Now this level, guys, I got 17. Target 1750, guys. 1750 on this trade setup. Actually, 1743. 1743 on crude. It's my next level. What we try to do, guys and gals, is trade level to level. So watch. Just like I told these guys, it's 1743. So we got about 60 more ticks upside on crude right now. All right, 60 more ticks on upside on crude, guys. 60 more ticks on this runner. So let's try to trade zone to zone. So we can see this level was put in last night. Called the high. Right? I'll show you how to trade this off a of 3 sim like yesterday. Let's take a look at yesterday's level. So yesterday morning, it was gorgeous, man. Just cranking yesterday. Yesterday morning, I got in here around 8.15. And I said, if we break this level, look for a retest long. If we break this level, look for a retest long. And I said, the target, guys, is going to be here. Sure enough, the 5 sim broke out of here. But look at the speed bar. Check this out. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at my speed bar. One candle close inside of a closed trend box right at my key level. Right at my key level. S&P hit the target, guys. We just went from uh, 2784 to 2404. Ten points on the S&P off my institutional level. Ten point play. All right, so look. It broke through right here's my speed bar. Right there it is, speed. I said if we break through this, it did, it broke, it retested on the 5 sim. I'll show you in a second. And then it went to the next level. That's almost a $2,000 move per one contract, risking on this time frame $150 per one contract. Then I said, as we come up here, I'm still in the live room. I said if we break through, guys, if we get through 1407 and we retest, the next level is 1607. Sure enough, what the 5 sim do, it broke, it retested, the first retest on the 5 sim right there, and sure enough, it went up almost $2,000 per one contract potential. Then we came to the high, 945, I showed you how to pull yourself in on the 3 sim with speed, it went all the way back down for another $2,000 potential per one contract, 16 to 14 again. So. Look at the speed that came in the market too. Speed came in the market right here, drilling us down. But look at the speed coming in the market on the breakout right here also. Look at these two setups. Speed here. Look at the speed bar right through the institutional level. Speed there. They're all the same setup. And speed here, speed bar. One candle closed right through my level. That's what you want to see. All right? 20-point play, 20-point play, 20-point play. Now, this morning, same exact setup, right? Just like it was yesterday. It was three for three yesterday like this. It came here. There's my speed bar. See the one candle closed, one candle closed. Breakthrough, retest. There she goes. My level is 17. My next level is 1740. 1743. If it doesn't make 1743 and you're already scaled and you got a, a, a runner, hold on, Gerald. Let's keep this running. I want to show the S&P. Hold on, buddy. I want to keep running here, right? So the runner is 1740. Now you got a free trade 
and you got 60 more ticks of upside. Let her run. You got nothing to lose, right? You got a free trade on your hands. Let it run. What we're trying to do, guys and gals, with these supply demand lines is I got them I dialed in really good. We're trying to trade zone to zone. We're trying to trade zone to zone. Zone to zone. Get a position on, scale your position, and try to let the runner run. Okay? And that's the process. That is the process. Trend level speed. This is a process. Trend level speed. Full retracement entry. All right. Now, when you do get these on your levels, I like to see this on your on your own charts. I like to see a rejection at my key levels, and I like to see accumulation right through. It. I mean, uh, right through. It. There, there's a push, still going up. All right. So. We got that running for us, right? Now, yesterday on those trades, it's still a small stop because we had a small stop, right? This is a break retest on the 5 sim. If I look at the 5 sim yesterday, it's the same thing that was today on those big moves. It's the same exact setup, guys. There's my institutional level yesterday morning. And I, we were down here. We're right down here at the time. I was in the live room. I said, listen, the trend's up. We're up. If we break through this level, we're going to look for the first retracement on the 5 sim. I even gave the time frame, and there it was. There's a full retracement below 10%. There's my green bar reversal. Nailed the exact low. It went from 12 to 14. That's how you trade it. But look at it's an ABC pattern. Breakthrough retest. So you can put these levels on a smaller time frame if you need to. Okay? That's how we do it right there. Entry is the break retest of projected supply and demand lines at the first full retracement. Stop is two ticks below the swing low. I sent this chart out to you last night. Not hard. This morning, exact looking trade. Break retest, full retracement. Okay? Let's bring over the S&P. Here's my levels on the S&P. So what you want to try to do, guys and gals, you want to try to trade zone to zone. Zone was 1283.50 to what? 28.05. Okay. Over 11 point S&P zone to zone trade. Same thing yesterday, zone to zone trades. You try to trade zone to zone. Zone to zone, it caught the exact high in the S&P yesterday. Caught the high in the S&P this morning. Take a look at it. Look at my level. There it is. You try to get in these break retest trades. Break retest trades. And if you get a break retest trade, you take the first off like this on the 5 sim. Take the first off. Break even plus one. Break retest runner break retest runner full retracement all the way to the next level these levels are static they do not move these are known 24 hours ahead of time okay this is not a lagging indicator very leading 